In this video, I'm going to talk about different arcs on the circle and different chords throughout the circle. The first thing I would recommend in your circle book is to draw the t these two diameters and then these two chords. And it will help if you try to make these chords uh, look congruent to each other. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is a theorem that says in a circle, which we're working with obviously, if the diameter or the radius, it doesn't matter which one, is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and the arc. So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at this diameter. I guess I can't click on it. This dash diameter, I'm making it, I drew it in so it was perpendicular to this chord. Now because it's perpendicular here, then I also know that it's going to bisect this chord, segment AB. It's also going to bisect the arc up here. So that would tell me that arc FB is going to be congruent to arc FA. So that's the first theorem. Now my next one, again in a circle, now it says if, if uh, it tells us that two chords are congruent, if and only, if, so it goes both ways, they are equidistant from the center. So what I'm showing here is I didn't want to just put the, the double tick on this because I didn't want you to confuse that with the whole radius. So I'm just showing you from G to C, that distance, so I put two ticks there, and then the distance from C to F, that's equal in length. Now because of that, that means that chord AB and chord ED are going to be congruent. So what I did is I put a single tick here and a single tick here to match up with the single tick and single tick here. So that you can tell that segment AB and segment ED are going to be congruent. Or if you go the other way, if you know these are congruent, the two chords, then you know the distance from F to C and the distance from G to C is going to be equal. Equidistant, that's that word that means essentially the equal distant from one point. So point G and point F are equidistant to point C. My next one, again in a circle, so it says two minor arcs are congruent if and only if corresponding chords are congruent. Well, I'd already marked that the chords were congruent from the previous theorems. So because these two chords are congruent, that means that the arcs are also congruent. And it would work the other way too. If you knew that the arcs were congruent, then you would know the chords are congruent. And then the last thing to put in your circle book is a little piece of vocab. The word circumscribed. So in this case, the circle is circumscribed about the quadrilateral. And I know I didn't give you a formal definition. All right, getting back. The formal definition would tell you that in order for a circle to be circumscribed about any kind of polygon, every vertex of that polygon has to touch the circle, has to be on the circle. So in this case, the quadrilateral, the circle is circumscribed because all four of the vertices are touching the circle. Now, to go to the other side of that, for a polygon to be inscribed in the circle, every single vertex has to touch the circle, and then obviously it's going to be inside. So think circumscribed outside, inscribed inside. And that's going to conclude the lesson portion on arcs and chords in, in circles.